Hi, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering, and in this video, I'll go through the, quickly the setup of a simple flow simulation. Uh, with uh, mixing tanks like this, it's always better to start with a simulation of just the flow, so we have good initial conditions. One thing I forgot to show last time was that we want we do want to have shared topology turned on. This allows to make sure that the meshes matches up at the interfaces. It's not completely necessary, but it's helpful to get this done. Let's save this and go into Workbench. Okay, so we have the geometry in. We're going to use CFX to set up the simulation. CFX is great at setting up turbo machinery models, rotating systems like this, and it's um, it should be pretty straightforward to get this going initially. Okay, here's our model. Looks like I forgot to suppress a few parts, but that's okay. We'll sub select all of these things and suppress them. So now we're left with just the flow region. I want to create a quick mesh on this model. Uh, right now, you see a circle around my cursor. It's a little bit large, the mesh size. So I'll drop that down to maybe five millimeters. A little bit more reasonable size here. The, the inner circle is a five millimeter circle. In addition, for sizing, I want to specify a capture proximity. Set this to three, which means that any small hole, small region will have at least three elements across the thickness, across that gap. And finally, we will add some inflation layers to this model. Start the inflation layer on the stationary domain here. Let's hide all the other bodies, and we will include all of the surfaces and exclude anything that's not a, uh, a wall boundary. So these are the areas where it's, it's not walls. Then we will add additional inflation layers on this part. Right click insert inflation and we'll do the same thing. So I'll start by selecting all of the surfaces and then exclude the the surfaces that are not walls. I could also have done a box select to select the interiors. Okay. So you can see the wall surfaces are selected. So I think that's all we need to do for the meshing part of it. Uh, you're welcome to create some name selections, but it's pretty easy for simple models like this just to pick the boundaries once we get into um, SSCFX. Okay, the model's been generated. We have uh, about 160,000 nodes. Uh, CFX is cell cent uh, a vertex-centered finite volume tool, so that corresponds to about 160,000 uh, control volumes. So that's all we need to do. Let's go back to the project page and get our simulation started. So this will be a very simple model. Uh, we have a stationary domain, a rotating domain, and periodic boundary. So the, we're going to first just go down this list, add a domain, uh, call it our turbine, maybe rotating turbine for a little bit more context. That'll be the turbine. Uh, it'll be water, continuous fluid, one atmosphere. We're going to turn off buoyancy for now, and it will be rotating along the at let's do uh, 340 rpm around the z-axis perfect we can select different turbulence models the mesh is pretty coarse here so i'm not going to bother with more advanced turbulence turbulence models we'll stick with a k epsilon model um, then we want to specify so right now it's water we can obviously specify different materials uh, some of the key things our customers typically want to adjust is the dynamic viscosity. Right now, we have the viscosity of water. Um, other bioprocessing materials could be 100 times uh, more viscous, 1,000 times more viscous. 
we can also uh, create use an expression to create a non-Newtonian non -Newtonian fluid which uh, and have the viscosity uh, become a function of the shear rate. But here we'll, we'll set up some basic uh, boundaries here. So let's let's have a top boundary. Top boundary will be a wall. Later on we'll use a degassing boundary when we start the multi-phase flow. But right now we're going to set this as a free slip wall to model as if there's nothing up there. Everything else is set up. We want to put in a domain interface. So this will be uh, stationary stat periodic and this will be we'll have this on the default domain this surface and this surface this will be a rotational periodicity around the global z axis we want to do the same thing uh, for our turbine side so this is the turbine periodic and we'll set this to here and it'll be this surface and this surface. Rotational periodicity. Okay. So now any flow that goes out of this side will come in the other side. So it fully represents our behavior here. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, the, the other thing we want to look at is that the, we have a connection between a rotating domain here and a stationary domain. So we'll use a frame ch change model called frozen rotor, which does not, does not mix the flow. So it assumes that this, everything is stationary here, but the flow, but it'll add the rotational component to the walls here. I think that's all we need it to do. And, um, I guess we should specify a rotationary boundary for uh, the shaft as well. So let's do shaft. This will be a wall, and this is a shaft here. So this will have a wall velocity, rotating wall, angular velocity, uh, 340 revolutions per minute around the global Z. Just double checking to make sure this is the same rotational speed we set here, then everything makes sense. So that's all we need to do for the simulation. Now we just have to specify that we want to run this for a little bit longer than usual, and off of we go. So, so we have uh, the initial condition will be automatically calculated. We have boundary conditions. So let's go ahead and run this on a few cores here. So we can see that the simulation is converging, but it's doing so rather slowly. Uh, with CFX, we can choose to adjust the rate of convergence and the speed of the simulation. So I'm going to adjust the convergence criteria and boost the time scale factor up. Since the simulation is kind of stabilized, I'm going to use uh, 5, which means the simulation will progress 5 times as faster. Okay, the simulation is completed. Not quite converged, but a few more iterations would have had uh, conversions, I think. But let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Okay, let's go back to Workbench and take a look at our results. Okay, so we have our model here. Right now it's just a sector. It's pretty easy in Workbench to show the entire geometry. So we're going to apply rotation to a full circle. There will be six instances in total, and now we have the full model. Uh, start out by maybe taking a look at the velocity plot in the XY plane. Velocity in the stationary reference frame, and you can see that the uh, the turbines are spinning and that causes the flow 
to develop in this particular way. We can also take a look at the, um, the periodic sections like this. And we can plot the velocity on that as well. And that gives a little bit more color into what's happening in this flow. I think this should have been the velocity in the stationary reference frame. OK. So that's what it looks like. We can also take a look at the shear. So if we go back to our plane here, uh, we can take a look at the click here gives us the access to additional data. So the shear strain rate. And we can see the shears develop shear high shear developing near the paddles. So the paddles turning this way, causing shear and uh, moving the liquid. There we go. So now everything looks pretty reasonable. Um, we can do some calculations. Uh, one, another thing that may be of interest is we can plot some streamlines. So we can start with one of these planes and let's look at what happens if we do 25 streamlines. Let's hide our periodic lines. You can see that the, um, the streamlines should be with respect to stationary velocity as well. So you can see the we have two sets of kind of flow kind of developing. One set on top that's circulating in lobes and then another set of flow circulating on the bottom. So from here we can do a number of things. Let's start to do some calculations. Uh, using a function calculator, we can, for example, calculate the torque on the uh, turbine default, rotational turbine. That's kind of the wall area, and we want the z-axis torque. Well, this tells us how much torque needs to be applied on our uh, rotor in order to turn it at 340 uh, revolutions per minute. Uh, we can also do, use some expressions to calculate averages. So one of the things we can do is, um, one of the things that's very useful to know in this case is things like average velocity of the flow as well as average shear rate. So we go, we're go, we going to calculate the shear average. And this is pretty easy to use because you can right click and get all the expressions. So we're going to get the volumetric average of uh, shear shear strain rate at uh, location. You can pick from any of these locations or the whole assembly. Okay, so the average shear is about 19.5 uh, shear strain rate. We can compare this with the different designs and obviously it's helpful to understand how much shear your particular bio process can withstand before um, the organism starts to get damaged. Uh, but sh average shear is one part of it. We also often want to know how uniform it is. Is it, do we have high shear areas, low shear areas? So we can create an expression called shear uniformity. And this is, a, there's an equation for this. So one minus the, um, let me see if I can find it. Okay, this is the equation we're looking for. One minus kind of the difference between the sh absolute value of the difference between the shear, local shear and the mean shear um, integrated over the area divided by kind of two times the mean shear over the area. So we can put that equation into an expression. So we're gonna use the vo volume integral of the absolute value of uh, uh, the variable shear strain rate. We can also just type this in, All right? Minus uh, shear average, which we have before, at assembly. So that's the volumetric integral of the 
difference between kind of the local shear and the average shear uh, over the whole assembly divided by two times uh, volume int of uh, strain rate at the assembly. So you can type it in, or you can right click and pick, click and pick stuff. Okay. Okay, looks like I have an extra bracket here. It really should be like this. I don't need this particular bracket here. There we go. Okay, volume integral of absolute shear rate, strain rate minus shear average. At assembly. There we go. So it's uh, the shear uniformity is 0 0.67. Um, we can also figure out how much damage we can particular we can potentially be doing to our molecules from just this basic simulation. That means we can put in a volume. So this will be a shear rate volume, and we can make an ISO volume and plot all the values of shear that's above, say, a hundred. Want to share strain rate here? Let's hide the streamlines, and you can see that these are the areas where the shear strain rate is above 100, uh, and that's potentially locations where we can develop damage. Right, if we do 50, you can see there's more of it. So let's do 100, and we can calculate. The area. So we can write an expression or can just say calculate the volume uh, here. Okay. Uh, so that's that's how big it is. If we want to know this as a as a fraction, we would have to write an equation. So shear percent. Okay. So we can say volume at what do I call this? Shear rate volume divided by volume at assembly. Okay, So less than 1% of the control volume here has a shear rate higher than that value, which allows us to calculate how much damage has been done. Um, that's it for this quick example. We showed you how to go from a model to set up a quick turbine simulation to look at the flow only, and then do some basic post-processing. In the next example, we'll add in the sparging gas, and we can take a look at the results there. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please subscribe to our channel. You can also visit us at singularityeng.com, and uh, we look forward to hear, hearing from you. Thank you.